Australian scientists have presented a landmark study that is warning the deep ocean circulation that forms around Antarctica could be headed for collapse. Leading this research is Professor Matthew England from the University of New South Wales Climate Change Research Centre and he joins me live. Thank you, Professor, so much for joining us. So can you break this down for us? What exactly does this mean? Well, we've been looking at the oceans around Antarctica and looking at the amount of ice melt and the the dumping of this fresh water. So when ice melts around Antarctica, it's very fresh. Um, that water is not very dense, so it doesn't sink anymore. And so this massive overturning that's been there for thousands and thousands of years, uh, it already has evidence that it's starting to slow down, but our projections are that in the future it will slow down um, as much as a half by the middle of the century. And then after that, it looks like it's on, on track for a a full collapse. And Professor, what kind of evidence is there to show that this is happening? Yeah, so we ran the model projections completely independently of the observations. We only sort of forced the, the model with the, the future climate we expect to play out and the future ice melt. But once we did this, we looked back at the observations and the signature we see of a slowdown is already there. And what I mean by that is oxygen is declining in the ocean abyss at so the very bottom layers of the ocean are losing their oxygen. That's what happens when these overturning slow down. But also the oceans down there are warming quite dramatically. And the reason they're warming is that we're no longer getting this cold water that you can see this animation on the screen here, the cold water that comes down the shelf, that's no longer getting down to the ocean abyss. And when that happens, it, it means that the water down there starts to warm up. It just, it loses the cold signature it's getting from Antarctica. And that's a sign that the oceans are basically stagnating down there. We're losing the, the ventilation that the surface waters provide. And so I believe that you've got satellite vision and also, you know, vision from from NASA and so forth. But um, how long has this been uh, going for and, and what kind of history have we got for evidence? Yeah, no, it's a great question. So the ice melt around Antarctica has been tracked by satellites for almost 30 years now. It really clearly shows, especially around the West Antarctic Peninsula, this animation on the screen now, you can see that this red patch that appears over West Antarctica, that's the hot spot of melt. There's other, there's a few other regions as well, but that meltwater circles around the continent very effectively. There are currents that take that water right around the continental margin. And when it does this, it actually um, means the surface waters there become very buoyant. They don't sink, and that means this overturning circulation uh, that we've been keeping track of starts to slow down. Now, now, we don't want this to slow down because the problem with it slowing down is that it actually stagnates, like I said, the bottom of the ocean. And that means that nutrients that sink to the bottom are left there, and they don't get brought back up to the surface to, to generate life, uh, to help grow phytoplankton and so on. So a bit like somebody who's got a fish tank at home, you don't want that water to be stagnant because it doesn't create a very healthy environment for, for the fish in your tank. Same for the global ocean. We want these overturning circulations to be bringing the water up from the ocean abyss, bring it up from the very bottom reaches of the ocean. It's nutrient rich, it feeds our fisheries at the surface. If we collapse that overturning, we sort of cut off a major source of, of nutrient upwelling um, back up to the surface. All right, and so where to from here? Well, um, the most important thing we need to do is stop this ice melt. And to do that, we have to we have to go for net zero emissions. We need to have, um, you know, all the nations of the world diving in and doing their work because it's not uh, it's not enough for a couple of nations to do the heavy lifting. We know that um, Australia's got to play its part and obviously go to international negotiations with a good record ourselves and push for other nations to do the same. Because as soon as we can stabilise emissions, um, get the atmospheric concentration stable we can stabilise the ice shelves and ice sheets of Antarctica. But the later we leave it, the less chance we have of doing that and the more chance we have of these sorts of overturning circulations that are, that are critical for the health of our oceans. We want them to stay vigorous and, and bringing water up from the ocean seafloor. With emissions cuts, we can, we can probably save this from a full collapse, um, but the time to, to act on this is really now. All right, well, it's certainly well explained and your animation really shows the picture. Where can people find out more information if they're interested in finding out? Yeah, no, there's a lot of resources online. I've been uh, in the Twitter sphere. A million people have looked at my tweets and, and engaged with them. And so go there. There's links to the data sets. So it's not just about us pushing our research paper. We also link to the observational data sets that show uh, evidence of this change. 
Um, there's everything from the ice melt around Antarctica, the, the, the way the oceans are freshening there, the, the bottom most layers that are warming. This is not just a model projection, it's based on um, observations over the last 20 years, then, then going forward from today to 2050. And all the signs at the moment are, are is that we're midway through that 40% decline. Um, and then obviously with ongoing meltwater, things just, just ramp up and um, you know we get we get an even stronger slowdown. Um, the other thing to point out is unfortunately that with this slowdown, the, the shelves around Antarctica, the water there in the absence of this cold water being formed, it, it does warm up and so you get this amplifying feedback for further ice melt. So it is really concerning. It can imply, it can imply even faster rates of sea level rise. And as I mentioned earlier, it can um, limit the amounts of the amount of nutrients that come back up to the surface.